afternoon, my people. It's been a very, very long time. Good afternoon. You're welcome to another live stream. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope I'm coming out very clear. You're welcome to another live stream. So, you know, there is this story that is just breaking. And I wanted to share the story with you guys today, Sunday, the fourth advent. So first of all, I'd like to say happy fourth advent. It's almost Christmas, guys. So we thank God that we are here and healthy and uh, yeah, able to witness today. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me once again. Yeah, I wanted to share this story with you because um, when I saw the news, I was like, wow, do you know uh, when I go to the U.S., I, I, I basically go to this area. So when I saw the news, I was like shocked, like what is going on? So it happened that it's two Nigerian couple. The man is a doctor and the, the woman is a nurse. And um, they have three children. The children have all grown up, you see. So the news that we are getting is not a very good news at all, at all, at all. They said they don't know what actually happened. Like there are different versions of what happened. But um, what we know is that they are just doing investigation so like i was asking people who know the couple because you know I, like i said it's it, it's an area that i i've been to and uh, I, like there's a, a grocery shop around that place i basically normally walk to that place when i when i'm in the u.s because um you know it's in the neighborhood where i used to be when i go there so like they said that there are different um like different versions of what is going on and uh, they said for example they said the first version is that uh, um, the man is shooting wife you see he first of all shooting wife then he can't shoot himself that is the first version and they said um, that the children because they have uh, three grown-up children. The children were there uh, when it happened. That's the first version. And the second version said that the children were not there. That somebody called the police and the police came there. You see? Then the third version said that, you know, the children were not there. Uh, it was the, the daughter that uh, heard news about it. Uh, like, the daughter have not heard from the parents for a long time. So she came to... Um, check out what is going on with the parents and then they saw what was happening but nobody is sure at all at all what happened but let me play the 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 news according to the u.s uh, um media what how they reported it so this is the man and the wife that we are talking about here hope you can see it yeah so this is the man and his wife. I mean, they don't look, they don't really look old, you know, they don't look old, but yeah. And um, so I wanted to share with you what the US news is saying. Five, six, five. Sugarland is a husband and wife have been found dead inside of a home in the Great Wood subdivision. And police say two adult children were injured when they got to that home on Brookstone Lane. Channel 2's Rochelle Turner is live on the scene. Rochelle, have police identified the mother and father? Keith, police have not identified the couple, but in a Facebook post, the rector at the Episcopal Church of Epiphany in Houston identified the mother and father as Ben and Teresa Okobo. They say this is devastating news to the Epiphany and Nigerian community. What they say Okobo is Okibo. Uh, yeah, Okibo. That's what she say, Okibo. So let me continue to play it. It's a 602, right? Sugarland so. is a husband and wife who have been found dead inside of a home in the Great Wood subdivision. And police say two adult children were injured when they got to that home on Brookstone Lane. Channel 2's Rochelle Turner is live on the scene. Rochelle, have police identified the mother and father? 
Keith, police have not identified the couple, but in a Facebook post, the rector at the Episcopal Church of Epiphany in Houston identified the mother and father as Ben and Teresa Okobo. They say this is devastating news to the Epiphany and Nigerian community. This area in the Great Woods subdivision of Brookstone Lane and Sugarland turned into a crime scene Friday morning. Ace Walker was shocked to see police cars and crime tape in his neighborhood. It's like right down the street. So that is, that is really wild. Around 10 o'clock this morning, police were called to this home. One of the kids dialed 911. Apparently there was a, a fight, a disturbance going on inside the residence. Inside, they found a mother and father dead. It appears that it could be a potential murder-suicide, but it has not been you know, totally ruled. Steve Nelson lives down the street and says the neighborhood has always been quiet. He's seen the husband before while walking his dog. It's shocking for all of us because you just don't really expect something like that to happen here. It's always, you know, somewhere else. It's still unclear about what happened and how the couple died. Neighbors say it's a tough situation, especially with Christmas a week away. My heart goes out to them. That's, that's, that's really sad. The two adult children are cooperating with police. They tell me they've been called to this home two times in the past two years. Both of those calls were not crime related. That's the very latest here in Sugarland. I'm Rochelle Turner, KPRC Channel 2 News. So, my people, this is the uh, like this is just a breaking news. It's a developing story, but it's shocking that they said the man is a doctor and the woman is a nurse and they have raised their children they have raised their children their children are grown up and this kind of thing still happens so um the the thinking is that the man you know uh, shot the wife and then you know himself maybe when he realized that his life is basically over you understand so um this is a nigerian hey hello good afternoon good afternoon carl cooks yeah yeah, so um, I don't know what to make out of this, but uh, I think it's something that I want to talk about going forward because there, these things continue to happen, um, you know, these couple problems, especially our, co our people from Nigeria and especially between, uh, you know, Southeasterners or maybe even Southwesterners, I, I'm not so sure, but, you know, it's always a recurrent issue that, People go to America and uh, they cannot just um, bear with each other. And th this kind of thing continues to happen. And I, I think that the only thing that is good about this thing now is that the children, at least they are adult children. They were able to bear with each other until the children are adult children. So I don't know what would have motivated the man, uh, you know, to do this, you know. Maybe the woman wants to leave him at this time and he's looking at himself that where does he want to start from? You know, he has raised the children and the children have gone out. Where does he want to start from? You know, um, <laughs> Kengos, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't pronounce it well. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think that, um, our men, you guys, you really need to uh, think very well. And our women, you people, you need to think very well because the system was there before you people came. You know, you don't have to, because of say you saw a system, you will not be able to bear with each other again. You know, there are some things you can easily bear with each other. And but because you are in America, you will not be able to bear with each other. And, uh, and uh, different people react differently. Um, you know, Thank you so much. You know, people uh, people react differently to situations. So my people, please, when you go to America, whether you are a nurse, whether you are whatever you are as a, a woman, uh, most of the time they, they blame the women that are nurses, but also the men, you also have to have your own blame. And I think that, like, for example, this man, he's a medical doctor. Most times, we used to say that the men don't have an occupation that you know the men went to bring the woman to go uh, to go to school so that you know the men, uh, she, he will be basically uh, feeding and living off the woman but we are talking about an accomplished father here who is a medical doctor and also an accomplished mother
who is a nurse and both of them have raised their children so what can cause this kind of a thing my people you can you know you can bring your own suggestion i think we need to talk about this thing because um we are not doing so well as a people uh you know as uh as a race as anyhow you want to categorize us when it comes to this issue of uh, family of bearing with each other of living together you know like even the people that put the system that we think is favorable for one person or it's not favorable for the other person they are still managing with it and even if they have problems with it i think that we can look at the problems that they have with their system and make all the profit we can from it you understand me we make all the profit that we can from the system instead of using the system against ourselves okay look at it now we are talking about christmas Oh, you're welcome. Uh, what happened is that uh, we're talking about a U.S. couple, a doctor and a nurse. The, the man shot the wife and then he shot himself. So, you know, they found them at, the, at their home. This is happening in the U.S. And the couple already have grown up children. The children are already grown up. They are already adults. So I don't know what happened. And the police say they are still investigating. So there are three different versions. Some say that, you know, the, the children were there when it happened. And that one of the uh, children sustained injuries. But, you know, another version said that the children were not there. They just came to check on the on the family and sort out uh, what has happened. So right now, nobody knows the uh, the motive. Nobody understand why the man did that to his wife. But me, I can think that maybe something is going on. Maybe the woman wants to leave him. Yeah, that's a very, very sad thing to, to hear. And imagine, look at, very close to Christmas. So my people, this is a very, very bad thing. And uh, I, I think that our, our men, especially, because I feel that a lot of women, when they are very secure, especially in America, when you when they have these good professions, you're a nurse, you know, you will never, no matter what is going on, no matter how bad the economy is, you're going to have a job. It gives you that kind of security. Sometimes it may lead to people don't want to live with them man anymore and i don't know what the situation is but i'm thinking that let everybody have at the back of their mind some kind of plan you know don't go and be planning that uh i'm, I'm going to leave uh, uh train the children and live with the woman ever after it may not be like that you know so that you're not going to take this drastic uh, st drastic step that this man took because uh he is the one that you know uh shot the woman first so for whatever reason you know and i think that when he has done that and he realized that you know i'm going to go to jail and my life is over literally you know so he decided to turn it on himself you see and um at the end of the day the other children children have lost their parents, the, the grandchildren have lost their uh, grandparents, and, you know, they will have to be dealing with this kind of tragedy at a time like this, you know, when uh, COVID did not kill them, when all the difficulties that they have gone through did not take them away, it is just uh, whatever it is that is going on be between them. And at least they have been able to raise their children together, you know, I believe they could have been able to resolve their differences. So I don't know what leads people to this extremism, but I think that um, we can we can do better than this as as a people, as Nigerians, as Igbos, as anything you call yourself, you know, as a race we can do better than this we can do better than this just because uh, the we see for example we sometimes we see high profile people that get into trouble who are white people you still see their their wife staying be, behind them standing with them and you, you may be thinking that uh, you know you are laughing at them and then you know they are um, me i'm the way i'm looking at it, i'm looking at it because the woman looks very very young and the man, I mean, he, he doesn't look old, but maybe the woman doesn't want it again. I don't know what the problem is. Or maybe it's because of money. Or maybe it's because of a project they are running. But whatever case it is, I think we should just take it easy with ourselves, you know. Because it's only this one life. All these things that we are dragging, dragging, dragging money, dragging po uh, position. Imagine, there are people that something like this has happened to and the children are still small. And the children will have to go into foster care and uh, will have to, you know, all this suffering. There is no need for that and sometimes you know the women all the children like if you come to this Germany most families are 
uh, single parent families, single parent family, single parent family. The men are, are not there, you know. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, the children get into difficulties because they don't have any uh, ro male role model to guide them, you know, to 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 give, uh, you know, to 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 help them to bring them up, you know. So we are seeing this problem in the diaspora and it's too much so my heart goes out to them and i mean it's not a very good story to say on a sunday but it's a developing story it's very very recent it happened actually the day before yesterday and i was thinking that i, I will just uh, do it on a live video like this so we can have this conversation that please my brothers please my sisters let us forgive each other let us bear with each other Eh? Let us use our church mind when it comes to these things. Just because we live in a place where we have a gun doesn't mean we should just use the gun on ourselves, you know? Yeah, exactly. We, we, we need to talk about it, you know, especially uh, when it has to do with couples, you know, and we have to talk about it even because uh, right now there are so many difficulties people are facing and some people just don't see any end to it. You know, it has been a very difficult year and especially for medical professionals. And if the man is a doctor and the wife is a doctor, I don't know what is the tipping point for them, you know, and the man decides that they want to end it all. You see, um, I, I feel that we can we can forgive each other. Honestly, eh? forgiveness is something that, uh, you know, we are undermining in marriage. Forgiveness is a fundamental part of marriage. Anybody that tells you that marriage is all zero, 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 zero. Marriage is literally forgive and forgive and forgive. You know, the things that you may not be able to forgive in marriage, uh, maybe, you know, bodily harm, um, you know, uh, you know, violent things like that and you just you know mm -mm, take your take your distance but most other ordinary things all these financial things we can forgive forgive each other and at, at the most we can just separate we don't have to be in each other's face all the time fighting and uh, heating up uh, uh, ourselves you know all this kind of a thing so let us please abide this uh, thing in our hearts you know, because I was thinking that today being Sunday is it's not a very good topic to talk about. But in, in the spirit of, you know, for example, whatever the case may be, if the man can forgive his wife, you know, he will not, you know, use the gun on her and he will still be here. You understand me? And if the woman too can forgive and let some things go, you know, it's still this life. They will just live their life. I mean, they have imagine they have they have they have brought their children up. In this, uh, in that America, imagine raising three grown-up children in that America. This is supposed to be t the time they are supposed to enjoy their life, you know. Because before they have children, all the struggle, going to school, doing all these, you know. And then they have the children, you know. They are trying to raise them, all the struggle, all the stress, and now the children are raised. This is the time they are supposed to stay together and enjoy the life because now they will have the money because the woman is a nurse, the man is a doctor. So obviously they are not raising children anymore. The money is not for them. Maybe travel, live fine, you know, eat together. You come home to each other together. This would have been a perfect time for them to enjoy their life. But look at what the devil has done because of unforgiveness, you know, because Anything that goes to this magnitude, you have to take it back to forgiveness. Sometimes you have to forgive yourself, even not forgiving another person. Forgive yourself. There are some mistakes you will do in this life that you would you will want to say, I want to end it or oh, what can I? But you just have to forgive yourself, you know. Sometimes the forgiveness is not just for another person, but for yourself. You will just have to forgive yourself because at the end of the day, it's still this life. You learn from it, you move on, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, when you look back, you will even wonder at that point of desperation, you know. And uh, we have also a problem that most times we don't have anybody we want to turn to. You see, anybody you want to turn to may turn to exploitation, may turn to making a caricature of you. And this kind of thing makes people to turn away from opening up and telling people what they are passing through, you see. So, my people, let us bear with each other. Let us forgive each other. And let us know when to, you know, walk away. And instead of causing more pain, you see, and uh, this suicide, uh, suicide suicide situation, I don't know, I cannot relate with it because when I was growing up, you know, in, in spite of all the difficulties that we faced, you know, they, they will always say, what are you going to do now? Are you going to kill yourself? It's like removing 
killing yourself from the equation. Like, okay, there is a possibility that you are going to kill yourself, but it is not part of the equation. It is not a solution. It's, it is not something that you consider. And so because of that, whatever anything is happening, say, I can't kill myself now. What will I do? You know, so because they already took your mind out of, I can't kill myself. But when people are in the West, you know, they don't have that mind that I can't kill myself. You know, they have another mindset that I can just kill myself and just end it all. I can just kill myself now and everything will end. So we need to teach ourselves and our children, you know, this, this concept that we had growing up and i see that a lot of people are also starting to take their lives at home you know because times are changing uh the dynamics of the relationships that people have with each other and uh, you know with themselves and with the community is changing so a lot of all these things is always coming up you see young people ending it all nobody just you know the whole thing will just be so overwhelming you know so again husband and wife please let us learn to bear with each other especially as black people you know and especially especially for, for our black men we need to understand that the black man is going through a lot in the west really no matter how easy you may have it as a woman you need to understand the place and the challenges of a black man in this society and you know cut him some slack you know he may not be perfect you may not be the best, but please let us learn to cut our men some slack. And again, our men would like to say to you guys, please, you guys should play your role, you know, and uh, preserve yourself. Don't make your plans based on your wife and, and your children. And, you know, when, when you are raising your family, when you are doing everything, be planning also for yourself. You know, because you know that all these things are transitioning. Your children will grow up, they will leave. You know, you don't know the aftermath, especially in this society. So always think about your end, your end. Think about it. What when you are when you are for 50, when you are 60. For example, a woman may go to school, especially for people in the uh, in North America and the, in the they can go to school, they can become a nurse and they will be professionals, they will just be doing that work. And you will be doing hustling, running around. But you know, by the time you are 50, my brothers. By the time you are 60, you are not having that energy to run around again. And then you want to sit back and, you know, think that, oh, you know, I sponsored my wife. I brought her over, you know, uh, her success depends on me. If I didn't bring her, if I didn't marry her. But she's not thinking like that. You have to put it into consideration. And especially the burden of living abroad, being a source of livelihood for people at home. That burden in all, is also on every family of ours that is here. It's called the black task, you know. It's also on every one of us. So you have to think about your end game. Think about your, you know, don't put your hope on the wife you're bringing and on the career she's going to make. Don't do that. While you're hustling, be thinking about your retirement. You have to plan towards your retirement so that all this kind of frustration that will want to make you to kill the woman, you know, will not be there. If you plan your end game, you see, you can also secure that end. However it goes, if, if it works out fine, oh, well and good, you can stay back together and enjoy your life together. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, you, you have a place to fall back to. What, uh, what our men forget is that sometimes unfaithfulness, you run around, uh, you become a serial father, impregnate everybody. At the end of the day, you think you are going to have that energy and that bustling and that figure, you know, you know, and that uh, six pack, all those kind of things that you normally will have as a brother, you know, yeah, uh, you live your life, you live your life, but when you are 60, when you are 70, you become an old man, you know, you are just there, <laughs> you don't, you know, you, you become abandoned, you have not really cared for anybody you are you were not really there for anybody and then this this is one and then the other people that actually really invest maybe you go home you bring your wife you put everything you invest in her you do too much you you, you just put you put all your plan on the woman you understand me um the time you are sponsoring the woman to go to school try to do something go to your own school too even if it is technical skill go and learn it something you can sit back and be doing in your old age and you will enjoy it so that you will not be this desperate you will not end up you understand in this uh, mindset that i brought you here i i you know i made you who you are and uh, i invested in you uh, you have to give me back uh, you know but uh i mean 
this is something I'm saying from a general point of view of what is happening between our, you know, our in our community. But this case is very peculiar because the man himself is a medical doctor and the woman is um, a nurse. So both of them are accomplished. So I don't know what would have led them to this end. Eh? And, and I think that whatever it is, it must be that it must be that it was uh, something with financial. It has to be financial or that the woman wants to leave. You see, uh, it can be, it can be, honestly, it can be. I have an uncle that, um, uh, like, it's not like an uncle, like somebody I know, you understand me, somebody that I know that something like that happened, you know, but, you know, he just let it go. The woman left and, uh, and you know, life goes on, life goes on, life goes on, honestly, life goes on. So, yeah, my people, um, let's uh, learn from what has happened to this couple. It's unfortunate. Um, it is not something that we pray for. And let's just learn from me. Let's, uh, you know, learn to forgive each other. Let's plan ahead. Let's, uh, you know, know that you cannot trust in anybody, no matter how good you think the person are. You know, you cannot put your faith in anybody, but you can put your faith in the plans you put for yourself. You know, you can put your faith in the preparation you have made. You know, you know, like they are said, they say uh, the years are. Um, the years are, how do they say that? They say the, the, the years are short, but, but the, the decades are long. The years are short, you know. For example, you know, like myself now, when I look at myself, I can't believe I'm 40, you know. But um, there are people that, uh, you, you, you know, before you know it, the years are going, and, you know, the years are going, and then you think that the years are going fast, you know. But at the end of the day, at the, at the end of the day, you see that when you are getting to 50, 60, 70, the decades, the decades, they are long on ending. And if you did not plan for them, if you don't make provision for them for those decades, you are not going to have it easy. And uh, especially as a man, especially as a man, especially as a man. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. My heart goes out to them. And uh, yeah, we'll continue to have this conversation. If I learn more about what actually happened between the couple, I'll let you guys know. But for now, I'd like to say happy Sunday to you guys. Um, don't forget to forgive, forgive each other, forgive yourself, forgive yourself for your misgivings, for the mistakes you made, for the things that you shouldn't do that you did. Forgive yourself, forgive those that have offended you and don't, you know, take drastic measures. Don't act in your anger. You know, just forgive yourself. Use your church mind. Try to forgive yourself, you know. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I hope you like the video and you hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the like button and the notification bell. So, get to uh, continue this conversation. So, see you another time. Bye for now. Bye.